Hello and welcome to the program. Environmental issues linked to radioactive waste are a crucial question in Ukraine. How to get rid of these without creating long-term destructive consequences for generations to come? Joining us in our studio today to expand on this topic is Mar Margarita Reitz, Head of the Development and International Cooperation Department of the State Corporation, Radon. Hello and thank you for joining us. Thank you. So, uh, f first, uh, there has been uh, this project about displacing radioactive waste. Can you tell us more about this, uh, this project? Yes, sure. Thank you for your question. Actually, uh, in 2015, um, an agreement between the Cabinet of Ministers of Ukraine and NATO Support and Procurement Agency uh, was signed, uh, which enabled further implementation of a uh, project on the reburial of contaminated sites uh, left uh, as a result of the execution of military programs of former USSR. So now we are working uh, uh, on the second phase, uh, this is Tibolova site, to actually remediate this site. Now, uh, so my understanding is like displacing those, uh, those waste. How did you choose the new location? Why choosing this location? Uh, actually, uh, there are six such facilities uh, in Ukraine. Uh, first one was the Vakulinchuk site, which we uh, successfully remediated uh, within 2016-2017. Now this is the second phase, uh, Tsibolova site. And uh, for, I hope so, uh, next one will be a, a Delatin site in Ivano-Frankivsk. And three more sites, um, they are located uh, on the territories which are out of regulatory control. Now uh, two in Crimea, Feodosia 13 and Bagirava. And um, uh, last one in Donetsk. So I suppose these are not really easy yeah. to, to, to retrieve. Um, now without being too t technical, is it safe for the inhabitants? Because I, I guess there are towns around. Uh, how safe it is for inhabitants around? to have these, these ways to run? Yeah, actually this uh, site now is under the management of Ministry of Defense in Ukraine. But uh, to tell the truth, uh, the management of this site, of site of such a kind, is not the primary responsibility of this ministry. Uh, it's, it shouldn't be responsible for management of such a site. So. Uh, now it's um, safe, but who knows uh, what can be actions of some, I don't know, malicious people uh, to enter this site to just uh, broke mm -hmm. this place and just... Now, uh, my answer is NATO is, impl is uh, implicated in the project. Why, why, why is NATO implicated in the project? Uh, everybody knows that uh, NATO is like a military alliance, mm -hmm. but uh, it's not uh, all the um, like f fu functions of NATO. Uh, NATO help, uh, helps Ukraine in implementation of uh, a number of different projects. And um, one of them, uh, one of the directions of NATO's policy towards Ukraine is uh, providing radiation safety and security in Ukraine. Now, uh, it is not the first, so that's for this side, right? But recently uh, there has been a a uh, bit of a scandal uh, around the uh, mine, which is being or have been uh, flooded in uh, in the Donetsk region because of radio and there are there are radioactive waste uh, there. How to deal with these problems when, when they're not exactly under Ukraine's control? Actually, this question uh, is not of uh, the question um, uh, with which our agency is dealing mm -hmm. with. We are dealing with uh, radioactive wastes all over Ukraine uh, in the territories which we actually uh, can control. But I can't tell you what is there in Donetsk, unfortunately. Now, these uh, wastes are from former USSR. Are there any facilities to storage uh, wastes which are being produced now? Is there any structure which is being built now to, you know, to deal with wastes which are uh, being built with? No. Uh, <clears throat> actually, uh, in, in the exclusion zone, uh, there are a number of um, uh, facilities uh, and storages uh, actually designed for disposal or interim storage of such a waste. So, uh, after this site will be remediated, all the um, wastes, wastes uh, have to come to the exclusion zone actually for their 
So the idea is to bring to bring them all into the exclusion zones because it's already safe there, or it, like the structure. Yeah, sure. It's already safe there. So the um, <clears throat> so technically, without be, being too technical, how does it work? Is it just purely burial? Is it concrete? Is like how does it does this uh, uh, protection works? You mean protection uh, in the exclusion zone? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so the you know <laughs> to enter the exclusion zone actually you shall uh, undergo your several mm. checkpoints. Yeah, sure, of course. Um, so the access just mm -hmm. the access to the exclusion zone is quite uh, strict, and uh, all the facilities they are secured and the phys physical protection is quite good there, uh, and they are designed for fifty years of storage. And actually, you know, just for your information, uh, Ukraine has chosen the way of crea creation of deep geological repository yeah, for 100 see. years. And now we are developing all the concept of building of such a repository. So it's mostly focused on geological depository, basically. In, in the nearest future, yes. But currently there are some radioactive waste disposal sites in the exclusion zone which can accept such wastes. Mm -hmm. To, to store them. Now, um, the, so you, you, you said there would be a, another step. What, what's, what's next for this, for this project? What's the next step for this uh, um, cleaning, let's say radioactive cleaning? Okay. So actually this project is divided into three phases. Um, first phase is a um, pre pre preliminary investigation and radiological and ecological survey and of course an investigation of all the historical data left. Unfortunately not much has been left, but anyway. Uh, the second stage is the designing or development of a technical solution on how to pretreat that kind of waste, how to uh, just place them in the special containers. And the third phase uh, is the remediation of the site itself. So can we imagine one day a completely clean uh, radioactive yeah, cream. actually in 18 months it yeah. shall be clean. <laughs> okay, well thank you for this overview, it was a pleasure to have you in the studio today. Thank you very much. Uh, that was Margit Raetz, Head of the Development and International Cooperation Department of the State Corporation. Thank you for watching the program and stay tuned for the rest.